JSON, short for JavaScript Object Notation, is a way of describing data. It's not the easiest to read yourself, but it's compact and easy to parse for computers, which makes it popular online where bandwidth is at a premium. Before we do the parsing, let's look at a tiny slice of the actual JSON you'll be receiving. I have it here in my browser. Now there's quite a lot of this. If you scroll down, you'll see, you know, there's potentially two or 3,000 lines of this stuff, all containing petitions from US citizens about all sorts of political things. It doesn't really matter, at least to us, what these positions are, we just care about the data structure. In particular, you'll see there is some metadata. This contains some response info, which in turn contains a status code. Status 200 means OK. That's what all internet developers use for everything's OK. There is a results value down here, which contains an array of petitions. Each petition contains a title, a body, some issues it relates to, plus some signature information, how many it has to have to be debated, and how many it has right now. You'll see that JSON has strings and integers as well. You'll see integers have no quotes around them, whereas strings do. Now Swift has built-in support for working with JSON using a protocol called Codable. When you say, my data conforms to Codable, Swift will allow you to convert freely between that data and JSON using only a little code. Swift simple types like string and int automatically conform to Codable. And arrays and dictionaries also conform to Codable if they contain Codable objects. That is, a string array conforms to Codable just fine because string itself conforms to Codable. Here though, we need something more complex. Each petition contains a title, some body text, a signature count, and more. That means we need to define our own custom type rather than just using a simple string or int. So we're gonna make a custom struct called petition that stores one petition from our JSON, which means it will track the title string, body string, and signature count integer. So back in Xcode, I'll press Command N, choose a new Swift file, and call this thing petition.swift. Inside there, I'll say struct petition, var title string, var body string, and var signature count, int. So this makes a new struct call petition with three properties. Now we'll start using that in a moment, but first I mentioned the codable protocol. Our petition struct contains one string here, another string here, and an integer here they all conform to Codable already. So we can ask Swift to make the whole position type conform to Codable like this. Struct petition, colon, Codable. And just adding that one thing makes it decodable from JSON. Now there is one hiccup here. If you look again at the JSON I gave you earlier, you'll see that our array of petitions here, this results array here, is actually part of a larger structure alongside metadata. This means when we try to have Swift parse the JSON, we need to load that key first. So look for results inside the main data. Then inside that is our array of petition results. Now Swift's codable protocol needs to know exactly where to find its data, which in this case means making a second struct. This one will have a single property called results. There'll be an array of our petition struct. This matches exactly how the JSON looks. The main JSON contains the results array, and each item in that array is a petition. So back in Xcode, I'll press Command N again, make a new Swift file, name this thing petitions.swift. And we'll say this is a struct petitions that is codable, and it contains a single value called results, which is an array of petition. This is our custom type petition, and this thing can conform to Codable because its only property also conforms to Codable. I realize this probably seems like a lot of work, but trust me, it gets much easier. All we've done so far is define the kinds of structures we want to load the JSON into. The next step is to create a property in view controller that will store our petitions array. Now, as you recall, in our view controller, we have this thing up here, var petitions is a string array. We want to make an array of our petition object. So instead, we'll say this our petitions equals array of petition, our custom type. 
It's now time to parse some JSON, which means to process it and examine its contents. We're going to start by updating the viewed load method for ViewController, so it downloads the data from the White House Petition Server, converts to a Swift data object, then tries to convert it to an array of petition instances. Now, data is one of Swift's fundamental types, just like string and int, although it's even more low level. It holds literally any kind of binary data. It might be a string, it might be the contents of a zip file, or literally anything else. Data and string have quite a few things in common. You already saw that string can be made using contents of to load data from disk. And data has exactly the same initializer. This is perfect for our needs. So let's go into view to load and add some new code. I'll say, let URL string equals, and now the URL for the White House API, which is https colon slash slash api dot white house dot gov slash v1 slash petitions dot json question mark limit equals 100. That is the URL to use to hit the White House API and fetch its data. Here though, I'm gonna use a slightly different URL. And the URL for that is https colon slash slash www.hackingwithswift.com slash samples slash petitions dash one dot JSON. And that will be exactly the same data you would have gotten from the White House API directly, at least today. But I've got a cache of it so if the server on the White House system changes or goes down or uh, gets removed entirely, this will carry on working for all time in the future. Anyway, that's the URL we want to try and load. We'll then try and convert that to a URL by saying, if let URL equals a URL with the string, our URL string, then fetch that from the API by saying, if let data equals try question mark data content of that URL, and if we're here, then we're okay to parse that data. So let's review what we have so far. So this URL string here points to our JSON data online. It could be the White House server if you wanna do the live stuff, or my own copy, whichever one works for you. Next, we convert that string to a URL safely using if let, rather than force unwrapping. Later on, you can return to this to add more URLs, so it's good to play it safe. We then convert that URL into a data instance using its content of initializer. This returns the contents from a URL, but it might throw an error. For example, if the uh, connection was down, there was no internet connection, so we've got to use try question mark. And finally on line 21, if those two have succeeded, which I should do, uh, well, okay to parse this data, start using it. Now this code isn't perfect, far from it. In fact, by downloading data from the internet in view did load, our app will lock up until all data has been transferred. It will freeze on the screen. There are solutions to this, but to avoid complexity, they won't be covered until project nine. For now, we want to focus on our JSON parsing. We already have a petitions array that's ready to accept an array of petitions. We want to use Swift's codable system to parse our JSON into that array. And once that's done, tell our table view to reload itself. I hope you're ready, because this code's remarkably simple given how much work it's doing. I'll make a new method down here called func parse json accept a data. Now if you remember, this is any kind of binary data. Inside there, we'll make a new instance of a type called json decoder. We'll do let decoder equals json decoder. And now we can say if let json petitions equals try question mark decoder dot decode petitions dot self from json then petitions equals json petitions dot results table view dot reload data so this creates a new parse method that takes some json data creates a decoding instance this is one of swift's core types that decodes json into objects of our choosing it asks that decoder to convert its data to a single petitions object that is petitions.self thing. Find this type and make an instance of it from our JSON. And then assign the result of that, the array of our results into our petitions array. And this thing here will match the name of the thing over here. Ah, actually it's called results with an S and I've used result without the S. So let's add an extra S on the end 
uh, there and uh, here, just to avoid problems. It should match the exact name in the JSON, otherwise it'll have problems. So we'll load results rather than result. Uh, and then when we're finished, we will call reload data on our table view. So it'll count how many rows there are again and reload every cell. Now we can replace this we're okay to parse comment with a callless new method. We're going to say parse JSON data like that. So now if I press Command R again, this should fetch a JSON from my server, convert it into a positions object, grab the array out of that, and show it in our table view. Boom, there we go. Now you'll see title goes here and subtitle goes here everywhere uh, instead of actual data. That's okay. Step forward. We can fix that pretty easily. We have this uh, self or method down here. We have title goes here and subtitle goes here. We can replace that. We'll say uh, let petition equals petitions index path dot row. Then cell text table text is going to be petition dot title and detail text label is going to be petition dot body. I'll press command R again. So now you can see immediately we're seeing titles and subtitles of all the petitions we got in the system we received so far. You'll also see we have dot 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 after the title and subtitle uh, where it gets too long. You can, if you want, make this wrap to have multiple lines inside there. But realistically, what we have right now is enough to give you a flavor of the petition.